So my name is Carlos Pereira. I'm a fellow and the chief architect inside Cisco. And on the next hour, we're going to talk about full stack observability in a world that prioritizes applications. So there is a lot of people here in the room, and there are, this is being recorded. So the people that are also attending and look at this remotely later. So welcome, everyone. So the idea of the agenda for the next hour is to cover three questions that I typically get from the audiences and also when we meet with the customers and partners as it relates to what is full stack observability, why it's happening now, and what the heck do you mean by full stack, right? So that's the typical three questions that I have. So I'm trying to get it out of the way so you can understand what you're talking about and then you become PhDs on that so we can go to the second part of the presentation which is all about what are the deliverables from Cisco on the full stack observability with AWS especially as it relates to use cases, the integrations that we already have and we are bringing to the market and also I'm going to tease a little bit of what you're doing on the Cisco FSO platform including some demos. So for all of you here, Brace yourself, fasten your seat belts, and let's get started. So what is full stack observability? No, and why now? Let's start with the word. So if you look at that diagram, that's a very interesting and basic diagram that portrays the problem statement that you're going after. If you look at the top of that picture, you see a typical business transaction, in this case a checkout, when you're going for someone on a browser or mobile device trying to go through the process for checking something they're trying to buy. And it hits a lot of components that runs on AWS, let's say the application itself, databases, the EC2 instance, the VPCs, the S3 buckets, and so on and so forth. From an observability standpoint, which is what I'm trying to define a more so from the operations team's standpoint, usually every corporation has multiple operations silos. Teams that look after their specialization, like the networking team, the security team, the application team, the infrastructure team, the cloud teams, they are also called the ops, cloud ops, sec ops, whatever ops, right? And they rely on their tools and their gouges that shows how performance are good or bad. And they're going after usually an inside out view of mean time to whatever, mean time to resolution, mean time to detection, mean time to this and the other. The whole point here is the word has been coming from monitoring and within IT we have this for over 10 years when the final outcome from monitoring solution was pretty much a dashboard or a view. And here's how it goes. I have a dashboard and my dashboard better be green because if mine is green, it means it's not my problem, it's somebody else's problem, right? That's how operations typically behave. And those dashboards were built based on passive access of information, usually alerts and events that typically are built into the dashboard based on sampling, where the main KPI that we're looking after is availability. That was like the case 10 years ago where availability was the big thing, and cloud, especially AWS, came to solve that problem by providing scale and access to resources as a much higher scale on a consumption model that was different than before. But monitoring still relies as a tool for a lot of companies out there. Many of those are still using the dashboards and have the war rooms, and the ones that eat the pizza fast and survives to the room actually wins sometimes. The problem with that is that the market realized that this is not enough. And you have to a point that the industry has evolved like five years or so ago when DevOps became more and more mainstream around every corporation, that visibility is where you want to go. And visibility has evolved from particular monitoring that was passive to more active ingestion of telemetry. In particular, the addition of metrics, events, and logs, the so far called mail, and we our, we are now aiming to go after root cause identification or root cause analysis on what is the reason why the problem is actually happening. So the KPI has evolved from availability towards performance, and this is good, is more insertion of telemetry from an active fashion. We are talking more about performance, but there are two effects on this. First, there is tools pros all over the place. Now there is a tool that monitor performance for everything, on every other aspect under the sun. And the main thing that did not get resolved on the evolution from monitoring to visibility, so far called on the buzzword on observability sometimes, is that it's still per domain, still per operations domain. So you still have the tools for security, for the applications, for the cloud, for the infra, for the networking, and I can keep going, going on and on and on. 
So what's happening now at the industry level that Cisco happens to be involved in leading a lot of those conversations is the notion of full stack observability. And this makes the evolution by bringing at least three to four key changes here. The first one is we are no longer talking about IT matters only or everything that goes on infrastructure, application, security, and cloud, but more about adding the business context to the conversation. Those people that used to be on the line of business that IT people don't care the most, or the ones that actually on the line of business went to cloud in the first place back in the shadow IT days, they're now part of the observability part of the equation because business context is the most important variable that is now added to the full stack consideration, which Cisco has been leading for this for years with solutions like full stack observability for us and app dynamics and so on and so forth. That's a key change on what we bring by full stack observability. The other change is the evolution of the stack. Instead of only considering metrics, events, and logs, we now add tracing. In particular, tracing for measuring the experience end-to-end -end when you talk about cloud-native applications. Security becomes a first-class citizen. Security and observability is coming together. It's very easy for you to understand why. If you are an IT person, you now need a lot of information from the security telemetry to figure out the root cause and what the anomaly detections are. And if you're a CISO guy or girl, you want to get everything on you only. So every corporation say, why should I duplicate this? Everybody needs the same information. So security has become a first class citizen on full stack observability. But the most important thing that we are bringing to the market is the ability to do full stack observability across multiple ops domains. So it's now a cross correlation, a cross operations domain, which has experience as the main KPI. Why? Because traditional monitoring and our silo visibility does not work in a world that is driven by hybrid or cloud native deployments. Because all the application components these days, in particular the ones that are cloud native, especially running on AWS, have become very distributed ephemeral, short-lived, and many times only <coughs> very, very, very short-lived or, or even stateless for some of the applications. And when you have stateful, some of those you can monitor, but not for all parts of the application. So you need to understand what is the evolution in the industry that allows you to provide the experience. I'm going back to this diagram. That diagram is actually for a session that I presented myself back in 2003. You may look like me like, hey, did you have more hair back then? Yes, I did, but that's besides the point. The point here is that this is a problem that's been here for almost 20 years. So the question that you may ask is like, why that didn't got solved before, and why now? It's the same problem, and I'm sure by the faces that I see nodding, that you correlate yourself with that, you just don't admit publicly, but you're all a big family here. So that's what's going on. And the why now is pretty much because of two major things that's going. I already explained the transition on the industry towards full stack observability, but there is an underlying foundation for that, which is as every business these days are evolving somehow to digital of any shape or form, in particular with their employees and customers working from home, so the experience becomes the actual digital currency. And the way you want to measure experience, maximize how fast you need to go for observability across the full stack. But there are three pillars that makes the why now, why it's happening, why it's needed for focus now. One is the time into market. The second is the availability of pervasive resources and the technically capability is the third one. So let's touch the first two. The first two, as I mentioned, Digitization is happening everywhere. I don't need to talk about this. You go and you know this. There are processes being digitized in your companies, and even the interactions amongst people are part of this. And talk about people, there are new attributes for users that are kind of dichotomy. One, you have the experience expectations for everybody to go high, and the patience of the homo sapiens to go very low, right? So even for the working from home, you don't have patience to wait more. You have another app on your phone that you switch if someone doesn't deliver the food at the time that you need, or if the bank doesn't deliver something at the time that you expect, or if your business transaction as a business 
provider that provides application to your customers is not fulfilling the way the customers of yours need because your competitors may be doing the same faster and better. So there is all this thing that pandemic just amplified and actually accelerated. And there is at the same time, a lot of pervasive availability of everything. So everybody has a mobile device these days, more than one. So you have access to all the applications for users and also device. Cloud obviously has been 10 plus years providing at scale resource consumption. Open source has become a foundation for everybody that develops software and consumes, not only for contribution, for part of every industry. I remember back in the day when there was argument when open source was this, that, and the other. There is no argument on this anymore. Everybody uses open source as leverage. And last but not least, there are consumption models. But from a technology perspective, which is the third pillar of why now on full stack observability, there's four things that I want to highlight very quickly. One is the fact of distributed tracing, in particular for applications that are now available and mainstream. And distributed tracing is very well suited for cloud native applications, in particular when you're using environments when you leverage applications developed on microservices. And that is being consumed through standardizations via open telemetry, which is the second point of open telemetry is the second biggest popular open source project today on CNCF, just behind Kubernetes to give you an idea. And that is out there, and that's what we at Cisco Leverage and many of other industry partners have to do as well. There is the notion of business contextualization that I mentioned before, and there are two technologies that are now empowering our solutions to go and provide full stack today. One is the notion of streaming telemetry that has been happening for a long time. But now instead of talking about only pool APIs, you talk about push APIs and you, you subscribe yourself to feeding of streaming telemetry. Why? Because the end user experience is real time or expected to be real time. So if you don't have feeds on real time, it becomes a problem. I was at a dinner yesterday with one of the VP of engineers on AWS and I was asking him why CloudWatch is not real time feeding push API. Boop. Just saying. So coming back on this, on the other aspect is high cardinality for time series databases. If I'm talking about high volumes ingestion of data, it's a cost driven point. But if I'm talking about experience and monitoring multi users, it's a high cardinality problem statement. How we bridge this together is something that we did at Cisco. The last piece that I want to touch with you so we can jump on the what are deliverables today is a typical question that comes to me was. What do you mean by full stack? So in talk with many customers out there, not only in the United States, but globally, there are typically two views of the full stack. There are people that are maybe not ready to consume full stack observability on the lens that their operational teams are so siloed that if you want to bring under a single solution, whatever that is, they cannot do this because it may break their operational model on their business. So those people tend to look at full stack from the people persona perspective. They look at how many ops teams they have and how they stack rank on that to put out a full stack. There is the other view, which is more a technology developer lens, when people look like, hey, like I have on the right side, the data, the API, the code, the library, the container, the orchestration, the cloud, or the multi-cloud environment that you got. So those are typically two conflicting sometimes on some customers, but if you put them together, you can understand that there is an interesting fact that goes with this, which is what I call as full stack dichotomy. If I look on the left hand side, for the people that anchor full stack on their mind based on people, usually their impact is driven by technology. So for instance, if you go bottom up, if you have an impact on something security, usually the one that gets further effect is the business. You see the external impact has a higher impact on the business because there is a security impact for internal. If you go to the network, usually you have, have the user experience because people cannot access. So there is a conflicting view when you anchor your full stack from the lens of people, but impact is actually anchored from the technology. The opposite is actually true as well. If you look from the people that look at the full stack from the lens of the technology and they anchor by technology, there is a mistake on that, in that right hand of the slide, they're actually directly driven by people. So if you have a developer that makes something wrong on multi-cloud and wants to get this on premises and, and have some automation or Terraform 
that, that gets pushed on a plan that doesn't work the way it is. The end user is actually high impact, and if you get some data that gets exfiltrated out of this, you can get in deep trouble. So when I look at this and talk with the customers, that resolution of conflict usually doesn't come across. Then we learn by a lot of experience that what you actually need and what's required to enable full stack observability is a combination of what you have on your teams and how you're gonna bridge them for an operational process together, plus what you have on your applications. Because full stack observability, make no mistake, is anchored on business applications. It's not anchored on infrastructure. You start for the business application to the business context because that's what matters for companies. The infrastructure is there just to happen and to help and to actually empower at scale and all those attributes. But the idea of what you require is to bridge those through through the, what we call the telemetry data stack. So every time that you see Cisco, myself and others talking about full stack observability, I'm referring to what is called the melt stack. Metrics, events, logs, and traces. That's what we call the melt stacks, standard, not Cisco created that. You can see a lot of documentation on that. And if you don't have anything better to do Saturday evening, you can get this slide again and read a little more on melt. So, but I'm gonna summarize very quickly for you. So for the people that are trying to read all of this and cannot read from the bank. So metric is all about aggregation of information, an aggregated group of information. So metrics is all about what you can aggregate. So let's say I'm using an EC2 instance for my application and I have 80% utilization time across the whole week. I don't need to measure this every minute. I have one single metric that aggregates everything for the week. As an example. So events and logs are actually time-based, moment in time kind of information. So you can ingest logs at the frequency that you define, and events can be goods and bads, like event, I got exfiltrated data or I got hit by a malware. You don't want that, but that's an event. Or I have an event that I close that deal that brings $10 million to my account. That's also an event, it's a good one. So events is something that based on time. Logs is a streaming. Both are time-based. Both are play of volumes. Why tracing is the last one is a chain of events that you track in order to map and trace the experience of a particular user through an application. And traces, by definition, because you're tracking experience and everyone is different, is a high cardinality problem statement. So when you talk about what's required to full stack observability, we bring in both together at Cisco. We bring the view for the people on the left with a foundation for the developers from the lens of data, telemetry data. You may have seen the keynote, the last statements from, from the CEO of Amazon was talking about data, having the data to validate this. That's pretty much the same approach you're doing together with AWS for that. And with that said, I just promote you all to PhDs on full stack observability definitions and all of that. And you're gonna now deep dive a little bit on what are the deliverables that we have ourselves. And Cisco has been delivering and is gonna build more and I'm gonna show some of the stuff that we're bringing together. And our architecture for full stack observability is anchored on some premises. The first thing is what we call an entity-based model. So everything that we ingest as telemetry into the Cisco full stack observability solution, metrics, events, logs, and traces. Everything is mapped to an entity, and you build a real-time correlation amongst the, those components as an entity, which helps us to scale, but also to have a single point of ingestion stored and having a unified query language that goes across all those signals. This has been a problem on the industry for too long. We have queries that optimize it for logs, queries that optimize it for metrics, queries that optimize it for some size of time series databases. But when you put those signals together that have very different data characteristics at scale, you need a way to think this differently. And that's what we did at Cisco in order to create a unified query engine that goes across all of those signals based on an entity model that scale and anchor on open telemetry for the ingestion, for the transport, and for the store. So let me give you an example. I was with a customer, I believe a month ago, and he asked me, hey, Carlos, I love your conversation, makes sense, I try your platform, it's all wonderful, but I have a mainframe. 
There's no open telemetry for mainframe, right? And, and happening. I don't think the guys that contribute for open telemetry, the kids this day don't know how to spell mainframe even. So I talked with the gentleman and he said, hey, can you generate something on the mainframe that actually shows when something is going good or bad? He said, yes, absolutely. What do you think of me? So I say, is that a text file? He said, yes. Can you generate this every hour if you need to? He said, sure. So why can we make this an event? Right? So if it's an event and it's a text file, we just convert this from open telemetry as a, plot, as a transport protocol and ingest this into the platform from the mainframe as an event with an open telemetry format. What's the problem? It's going to back end on the mainframe as an open telemetry as metrics and logs that is going to correlate with the tracing of his application that runs on AWS. Everybody's happy from a full stack observability standpoint. So think on that perspective because that's what I'm going to show you on the FSO platform. This is a busy slide. I'm an architect at Cisco, so give me the pass for a couple minutes so I can, I can give you the, the block diagram so you understand where you're going. So the platform is the foundation on everything that we are doing. So as I explained to you, we ingest metrics, events, logs, and traces, and that cross in front of it means cross teams. So you have melt from security, melt from infrastructure, melt from applications, melt from networking, including the networking on the internet. That's the power that Cisco can provide. It's not only what runs, for instance, on AWS. If your application is running on a mobile device, Android or iOS, and a customer anywhere in the world, I'm going to instrument this and be able to ingest that melt, because that's a cross melt for the line of business people. So we bring that. Cisco knows a thing or two about networking, I would say. Another thing or two about security, he's been doing this. So ingesting advanced telemetry on those, including backbones across the globe, and being able to, with, together with AWS, ingest advanced cloud telemetry. So we can do correlation, you can do anomaly detection, and can provide insights that are more real time, but also predictive. We have some models on application and artificial intelligence, and even machine learning that predicts where you're going. So to give you an idea, we spent the last two years modeling the whole internet. Yeah, the whole damn thing. So you can able to predict traffic and what your user is going to see and where you're going for that perspective. So all of this anchored on open telemetry in order to provide services that may be today provided as single product categories. So application performance management is an example of that. You have, for instance, AppDynamics that provides application performance management for a long time. It also provides digital experience monitoring. It's bringing also security. But we are adding all those capabilities that belongs to products today, also as services from the platform. Why? Because if you ingest this as a single source of melt, I can correlate better across multiple domains. That's the whole point of full stack observability, to get out of the silos. Right? And on top of that, we have a, a notion at Cisco that's called business context, which is a differentiation for us, and we believe that is something that a lot of customers actually want to implement. And I'm going to have in sharing some of the experience that we have with the customers that already implemented this. The notion of business impact is something along the lines of, hey, let's say you run your, your application on AWS, and you have, for whatever reason, uh, five or 10% impact because someone fat fingering a configuration never happens on this audience, only happens outside of it. But let's pretend it happens somewhere. So you have 10% of your infrastructure impacted, right? So what business impact from Cisco can tell you is that, hey, out of this five, five 10% that you have an impact, it actually impacts your business application 20% and that's a million dollar loss that you have today. You see that correlation between what do you see on the infrastructure versus how does it impact in your business? That's something we can do today. We have another notion of business risk, which is, goes on a different dimension, which is the following. Let's imagine that you have that same business application, and that business application has multiple business transactions. And you may define that your business, let's say, the business transaction for payment is more important than the business transaction for search on an app on your mobile device. You may choose otherwise. I'm just making an example. So if payment is the most important business transaction for you, what you do with the business risk is ability 
to instead of giving you all the vulnerabilities that might exist on your components that belong to that particular business application, we carve out this on the business transaction that's more important to you. So you are an operation people. Let's say you had 100 vulnerabilities that goes all the open source components. We now may be at 20 or 30. So what we did, we went one step further. We went and got all the vulnerabilities that exist on the internet because Cisco is one of the entities in the internet that classify CVEs. We are one of the few companies on the, on the planet that do that. So we have the full list of vulnerability and we actually provide information for the vulnerabilities when they come up front. So we build a system that actually gives you what is the likelihood for that vulnerability to be exploited on a particular environment. So we took that, correlate with the business application that you have based on your impact. So what used to be 20, maybe now two. So imagine you need to look at 100 vulnerabilities because you have open source components for everywhere, now coming to one or two that actually has a high likelihood to be exploited on your environment that has high business impact for you. That's what you bring. The last one that's business experience I'm gonna cover on the previous, on the following slides as well, has to do with a very common scenario that we have these days. So I'm assuming that a lot of you, for the good or for the bad, are working for home some days of the week, right? Which means that you're consuming your own applications for your personal merit and your business application for your employer's SaaS or otherwise from your own personal computer or laptop or your iPad, whatever you got, from home. So now the business needs to measure your experience as an employee and your customer's experience as well. Either you're a mobile or a device that is a browser, VPN or otherwise, right? So you have the end user here and you have the applications that we're accessing here that might be running on AWS within yours or maybe some SaaS services or even those applications have external dependencies that are accessed through APIs. And on the middle of that zoo, there is something that's called internet. It's the main substract these days where you're working for home. You can't deny it forever, but that's the fact. So what it did with the business experience is to be able to map the experience in real time from the end user, whatever that is, with the internet in the middle and the application, whatever that is, and the backend dependency if they exist. And the reason why you're doing this is not to give you full correlation first, it's actually to give you triage first. To say, not where the problem is first, but where the problem is not. Because if the problem is not on the end user, I don't need to go to the line of business and try to update the app if the problem is maybe something on a misconfigured VPC or even there is a, something wrong on the internet that I need to reroute for another place. So we get this delivered. And business operations is just optimization around migrations and some of the customizations that partners of ours has been doing together. With that said, we have enabled seven use cases that are shipping and available on customers today. And I want to highlight just three before I go to the demos. The first one that's very popular is modern application monitoring. It's pretty much aiming for the dev environment, the dev people, and the cloud ops folks in seeing any corporations. And the idea is to give a dynamic view of AWS cloud environment from the cloud infrastructure where it runs all the way to the the microservice application running on this case of Kubernetes layer within EKS as part of the cloud native app the environment. So this is AppDynamics Cloud, which manifests this deliverable. And we got this shipping and announced and shipping in GA since June this year. So it's been about six months. And what we have that is observability with the business focus. We are having today the cross-mail troubleshooting within AppDynamics Cloud by ingesting multiple signals for different teams, on this case on AWS, mapped with EKS, and have all the technology that we have on AI and machine learning for all the MTTR and MTTD for root cause analysis. What we're announcing today is the extension of business transactions that's a classic differentiation for AppDynamics within AppDynamics Cloud that is part of what makes us able to differentiate what's more business impactful for you, also for cloud native. Watch the announcements today. There is a session tomorrow, 10.45 or 10.30 here on the same Caesar Forum venue that I recommend you to attend that's gonna go in more details on this. This is just the screenshot of AppDynamics Cloud, which is manifestation of the Cisco FSO platform 
entity model with something that's called hypergraph, which how those entity models depend on itself and how we render this in the visual, which I'm gonna show in the demo, and the session tomorrow is gonna to go in a lot more details than I do. If you don't have patience and you're so anxious to go tomorrow and wait till tomorrow, you can go to the Cisco booth, the guys, people, ladies and the gentlemen there, we can help you there as well. There is another use case that is super popular, which is what I mentioned before, and user at home or mobile, internet in the middle, application independencies. What we bring, we get the NetOps people that pretty much deals with networking and the internet, plus the cloud ops and everybody that runs on the applications, and be able to regain control of connectivity and correlate what is your application view with your networking view and have that cross telemetry be able to show the dependencies and the end-to-end -end troubleshooting and triage upon that. The goal is, instead of you looking at transit networks, which is NetOps people, cloud infrastructure, which is pretty much the people that deal with AWS, users that are aligned to the business, and apps with the application personas and share a common playground called the internet, we are bringing the notion of full stack insights by pretty much merging together the internet in one monitoring telemetry which application performance monitoring which exists, for instance, with Cisco AppDynamics, internet and one monitoring that exists with Thousand Eyes, and end user and monitoring syntax that comes from both, bringing those together in order to provide visibility across all the layers, try to bring together the intelligence that fits on your business needs and your all applications across the multiple functions and teams, and provide recommendations and actions that will help you drive collaboration on your business. The last one, that I want to highlight as a use case, this one is an interesting one. It's called application security. As I mentioned, and yes, we have a lot of creativity on our names, yes, I, got, I made fun of that. But application security is pretty much what we talk about on security that's not related to infrastructure only, like firewalls and, and networking security and stuff like that, but on an application that includes runtime for traditional and cloud native, the CI, CD, shift left even further for posture management, some other things, and mainly API security. And the idea is to protect against vulnerability in runtime, including the extension for dependence on API, and that business risk observability is something that I explained to you you're coming in February. This is an example of a dashboard that a customer of ours built together based on our technology. This is built, this is an actual customer, I remove the link of the, the logo of the bank and put my own there. Cisco is not getting on the financial business, but just an example for you here. So this is a bank in Europe that decided to actually jump and launch a services of loan in United States. Again, it's an European bank, so the bank doesn't have the leverage of Bank of America, Citibank that has a lot of branches. So for the European bank, loan in US is like FinTech, right? So based on that, the main business context for the bank is not how much money they're lending for someone, but instead, how long does it take for an experience for that particular lady or gentleman to go to their website and get the loan approved? Because that is the main metric that the bank is considering to capture the business. And I believe they got it right. So as you see on the dashboard, they got the correlation for Cisco full stack observability from the infrastructure underneath that application runs the back end of this in Europe because there are some regulations on Europe that required them to have local sovereignty and compliance for the account and the users. But the front end runs on AWS in the United States region because it's closer to the experience to the end user. And it runs on Kubernetes. And you see that it's mapped from where it runs to all the places on the bottom right where it runs on the United States from a network invisibility perspective. So we have the view for the network correlated to the infrastructure on top of which the application itself runs, which is represented for these greens and red dots that the customer decides to do. So he took the application and actually sliced it down on all the steps that needs to do, and the blue balls is actually the flow of the end user. So he can track at that given time, there was 185 people that were on their web page, and 183 got to approve. If you see all of this, everything looks fine. Network is not a problem. The infrastructure is running okay. There is no errors. There is only a red dot on loan submission, but it's not impacting the business context. The timing for closing is still okay. However, 
there is a risk loan vulnerability screaming on your face right there. It's not impacting on the business, but impacting on your risk. So what we went through, we doubled down this and said, okay, let's see the flow map of all the application dependencies that exist from that. So you see there is a code going towards loan and as you, the people that live in the United States or are aware of this, in the United States, like many other countries, you need to check credit score for someone before a loan, a loan is allowed. So there is those silly numbers or magic numbers or whatever you're gonna call them for 800 and 900, whatever that is. So, and you have three credit scores in the United States that goes there. So we checked the code at the bank and the bank said, hey, I have a problem on that stuff, but the problem is not my code. You see it on the top right, it's screaming security all day long for you. There is an issue there. There is a red ball on the code. But what is pointing for this is actually to external dependence on this case for experience. It's one of the credit score here. So we went even further on the full stack and correlate what is runtime that runs on that particular code. That code was written in Java. The back end is Java running traditional. The front end is still Java running on AWS. The code was running in Java. Doesn't matter where it runs. So we look at this, and there is no vulnerability associated with runtime of that code, neither on traditional or cloud native. So like you scratch your head and said, what the heck? What's going on here? What actually happens is we went deeper on full stack observability from Cisco and map what's the external dependencies, and we find out from an external dependence there was indeed issues on accessing the API for the credit score for the loan, on this case, experience. Experience is not problematic. Don't get me wrong, I'm not throwing them under the bus. Their API is okay, but the way it was called for versioning of the API, because the SaaS provider don't give you an update, hey, my API changed in the versioning. So there was a previous way of calling that they still respond for backwards compatibility. The new way exposed new ways for data to be available. So you have a potential glitch of PII exposure on that API call. It's a big serious issue for risk, but it doesn't impact on how the code was running in order to get it in there. So just for you guys to think how full stack observability can be impactful for your business, even though sometimes on this example, the experience of the end user was not being affected. But the experience of some of that data being exfiltrated would generate more trouble for your business rather than just the experience itself. We were able to correlate it all together. So up to a point that we learned from that experience ourselves, talk with the bank, and a year or so ago, we actually added that functionality into the popular IDEs. This is just an example of Visual Studio that we have out there. We add that functionality in Visual Studio in such a way that if a developer is developing their code, it does check the API with does automatically for external dependencies to see if the API is rogue or deprecated or malformed or something like that. So you can have that view at time. And if you decide on your policy that you don't want to have this code with some of those signals go to the CI CD pipeline, you can do so. So the last part that I want to go here before I go to the demos is the FSO platform. The Cisco FSO platform is something that we've been developing and you're gonna announce the tech preview this on Cisco Live at Amsterdam, which is February 2023. But I'm going here an avant premiere, a teaser for all of you that came to the session, plus everybody that's on the screen on the recording that. So with AWS, we are ingesting AWS services melt. As you can see, you have multiple services from AWS on the bottom of that slide, and I believe that material is gonna be covered tomorrow on the session as well somehow. But we have that ingestion of services that belongs to database, to belongs to networking, to belongs to compute. Even though there is a cloud ops that may overlook all of this, they belong to different operational domains. So in just all of that, but the main thing that we are doing with the Cisco FSO platform is not only bringing this correlation, but the yellow part, which is called extensibility. So the ability for partners of ours and customers themselves to extend the data model, to extend and run their own code on top of the melt data that's being ingested, extend their own melt data. I was talking with some, that same financial customer and he wants to ingest his own financial data, which myself at Cisco, I don't understand. I don't have access to, and I don't, work, I don't know how the event correlation and, and the logic is. He does. So we enable extensions for the unified query language ourselves too, as he can build their own ways to build that up to the UI and other formats. So 
in a nutshell, the Cisco FSO platform is just a single place when you ingest integrations from multiple products from Cisco and third party vendors as expected because I'm talking about metrics, events, logs, and traces, so it doesn't need to be only from Cisco. And we are now cross melt, cross melt being melt from multiple operations domains for troubleshooting and being able to extend this in such a way that developers are empowered to build their own solutions on top and extend services on full stack observability, as I mentioned before, for your own data model, for custom APIs, and even for custom UIs. Why do I need that? I was talking with the Gartner some time ago, I believe two months or so ago, and they're making a study together when they came in a, a statistics that 73 or 75% of the customers out there today would consume full stack observability based on a partner offer, either being a system integrator, an outsourcer, or a managed services. And that kind of makes sense to me, because a lot of this has to do with technology, but a big part has to do with the people. And people has been operating on silos for too long, and then sometimes they offset this to a particular partner that does this together while they are focusing on their business. So based on that, what we build on the FSO platform is the ability for outsourcers or managed services to extend the offer to build their own offers themselves. So we may have their own custom UI, their own logos here and there, their own workflows, and their own custom APIs they can provide to their own customers. So that's how powerful we are bringing this together. And with that said, I'm going to show some demos to you, and then we're going to wrap this for any questions that you might have. So if I may just switch the screen here. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, this is a video, it's a teaser for what we are coming to the FSO platform. And there are two demos that I want to show you. One is a low code, no code extensibility of the platform for how you can enable UI and enhancements for the experience of who else is consuming that, which is more on the visualization. And second is how we can extend a Kubernetes entity model that is on the platform to add efficiency and cost as it runs on top of Amazon EKS. So let's go for this. So the screen that you're seeing is the currently manifestation of AppDynamics Cloud as a product. If you go and buy AppDynamics on buy the license, subscribe and use it, you're gonna get that screen. What I did not tell you yet is that that particular product runs on top of the Cisco FSO platform since it's GA. The only difference is we didn't expose the extensibility of the platform for other products yet back then, but it's running there. And what it has here on the case of EKS, it has application performance monitoring, it has the Kubernetes services on top of the infrastructure it runs. So if I go here, it, it shows all of that and it maps all the dependencies on the entity model that those application performance and those services are running on top of that. So what I want to highlight on the left-hand side of this, what we have here on the left is what internally we lovely call hypergraph, but what it is is basically a manifestation of the entity model. I'm clicking on the top on services, which means that everything that's showing here is the flow maps of multiple services and the dependencies that exist among them on the entity model. If instead I would have clicked, let's say, on workloads or pods, the whole UI and the whole services model will change where pods or whatever I had clicked, it would become the root of the entity model and everything and relationships will go around. This is very important when you don't need to go on multiple tabs, like I have infrastructure, and I have networking, and I have application, and I have Kubernetes, and I have compute, as multiple tabs on an application performance tool and you need to context switch on your mind. Here, the context switch is part of what you are, depends on how you want to go. So, you have the flow map, you, you see that there are services that depend upon themselves, there are others that are not, are just entities that are alone, so you may want to look and troubleshoot for that. So in this case, you have 40 plus services that depends upon four clusters that runs on X pods, and so on and so forth. If you click on one of those that are available there, you can zoom in, and if I click on one of those, what it's gonna give you is, in this case, I click on a services instance, and that it's a card that has a lot of dependencies when you see the health and some of the data for metrics. So I have metrics, events, logs, and traces. 
and what the endpoints here. So this is pretty much what you get today from AppDynamics Cloud as a manifestation for the FSO platform. So let's start to play. So what I'm doing here is showing you how you enable the extensibility from the platform, on this case for UI. That UI that you see on AppDynamics Cloud is nothing more than a JSON declarative configuration-driven system when you can share that configuration and you can change this without knowing anything about JavaScript, about CSSs, or about all of the things that you need to eventually know to program an interface. So the first example that I'm going to show is you see there, I'm going to make a change on that declarative JSON configuration file, which is actually what gets rendered to build the UI on the right-hand side. And I'll change just a very silly one so it can warm up our brain. So you see that on the right, I have endpoints of cloud something, or the cloud card. So I'm going to go there, just change instead of endpoints to services endpoints. And what are you going to do? I'm going to render this and run that. And by the time I run that, it will update on the right-hand side on doing what is services endpoints there. So that was an easy one. But in order to do that with Cascade Steel Shite, CSS is on the browser, it would be a nightmare and I need to know what the code is behind the scenes. So let me do a different one. If you see there on the services endpoints, I have multiple information. So I just want to add a new column. I know that I ingested data for additional information that's not rendered on the UI. So I just copy paste a piece of this, and what I'm gonna do is actually have a new, a new column to show up there. It's part of my UI, it wasn't it's part of my data from the telemetry. It's part of my coordination. It wasn't on the UI. Now I made sure it was there. So let's go one step further. So what I want to go now is instead of just playing with these graphical things, I want to go a little further and change a way you see the information. You see on that endpoint, I'm having a lot of information on metrics that are very pontal. It's very based on a given point in time. So I want to change this to actually go spark lines. So what do you do? I get the spark lines code from you. You get, you render this on the platform, and pretty much what it does, it changes to spark lines. A couple things that is important to notice here. One, you brought the spark line code, not me. Okay? So that's the level of extensibility that I'm talking about. Second, this used to be a point in time. A spark line is a period in time. So what happens is when you brought it in, the FSO platform recognized it went and query on the platform what it was and brought it back on the period of time that your spark line set and built this. Because before you have a point in time, now I have a period. And third, this is something that we enable upon subscription on a tenant. So if you are a customer, you can subscribe to that functionality if you want. If you are a provider, you can enable that subscription for some tenants or not. And all of that makes sense when I go to the other demo. So that's part of what we have here. So the Spark lines, again, you as a customer or a partner, you do not know to, you don't need to know how it's coded behind the scenes. It's pretty much how it's manifested itself on that. So let me give you another, another demo here, which is pretty much a way to get optimization across. And I'm going to accelerate this because it's going too slow for my taste. So, and I like to move fast. So let's go for this. The other one is optimize a cluster. So we get a technology that allows for cost optimization and, and all of this that has efficiency on the clusters on the case of AWS here. So what we did, we pretty much got that piece of code that is intellectual property for an external company brought into as your code that you can run and get on the platform and manifest itself on the UI as a widget. That on this case shows what's the reliability and efficiency rate of the Kubernetes cluster itself on EKS. So hopefully it shows you how flexible the UI is not only for a customer itself, but even for a partner that has multiple customers as a managed service. So let me go in now for another example that I have here, which is this. 
So this is the second part of the demo. I'm going to augment the data model, the entity model for AWS EKS itself. So AWS EKS is a Kubernetes, obviously. But as a Kubernetes, the foundation of a Kubernetes are pods, namespace, and all of this. So cost and efficiency is an attribute that may not belong to that because you want to go cost and efficiency across multiple components. So you may compare these EKS addresses, let's say OpenShift, right? So what it did is the ability to get an external company, that company is called Replex. We at Cisco happened to acquire that company as a piece of the intellectual property, but it could be a piece of your own intellectual property that you develop on your customer, or it could be in a startup. It was a startup before we acquired. So what we did, we got that information, they fit telemetry for cost and efficiency for Kubernetes cluster. So this is Visual Studio. This is you as a customer or partner. You go there and you create a Kubernetes augmentation for the data model. So you go there, you programmatically extend to create a function that allows you to ingest the limit for that external source, on this case, cost and efficiency, and you create two new metrics, one Kubernetes cost and another Kubernetes efficiency. Let me emphasize, you are doing this, it's not Cisco. So you are going there, so you create an extension of the model and you say, hey, I want to actually create two other metrics there are extension of Kubernetes as well, and I want to have cost mapped to everything that's a, as a cluster in a namespace, and efficiency mapped to a cluster. So by, you can see that I have cost and efficiency as part of this, which means that every time that you are on that particular tenant, you are ingesting telemetry from an external source, on this case on Kubernetes and cost, augmenting AWS EKS and making this as part of your query language. Either you as a customer for your own use or something that you're a partner for customers of yours. Imagine that I have a customer on healthcare that he wants to ingest data for compliance, HIPAA compliance. He does know I don't. So he's ingesting on the platform, being able to augment the entity model, create his own compliance black box entity, map with the infrastructure, and be able to extend this for observability. With that said, that's pretty much what I had for the demos today. And I believe that's what we went through. We went to low code, no code extensibility for the experience enhancement and extend Kubernetes entity model for efficiency on EKS. This is something as a, just a teaser for you. You expect a lot more on the tech preview in February and on the Cisco booth, you can go in details. With that said, why does it matter to you? Because full stack observability is happening. It's, an in, it's not a should. It's an industry transition that's happening there, and it's a business must. So we are on the forefront to drive this trend on the industry together with AWS, and I expect you guys to eventually engage in some of this on your own companies at your own pace. With that said, we still have like five minutes or so for any questions. I have a microphone here that I'm not allowed to jump over this, otherwise the people on the back is gonna shoot me, I guess, or something along those lines. If you have any question, you either come to the front or yell, I'm gonna repeat the question for the recording. If you don't have any question and you're tired of me or you're hungry because you're about lunchtime, you're free to leave. If not, just ask your questions and I'm here. Thank you very much.